Trail Tech Vapor. I'm going to install this, just the uh, the standard mounting hardware, just to kind of get an idea of where it needs to go before I start wiring it up. So this is the coolant temp. I believe this is the uh, wheel sensor. I think that's the power, and this is the RPM that goes around your uh, spark plug, coil pack, whatever. Anyway, this video is going to consist of the install of this. I think I'm going to do a 2x time warp. So I don't waste anyone's time. If you uh, feel free to pause it if you miss anything, but it's very simple. All right, so time for a uh, time warp. So I had to stop for a second and uh, show you the issue that I had. These are the mounts. This is for a smaller bar. Not sure what this is for. Uh, maybe an inch and a quarter, but then again, uh, I thought I had a Renthal fat bar. It gets, it tapers down right here and it gets bigger right here. But uh, anyway, the bigger one is a little too loose. This one's way too tight. Uh, unfortunately, you're supposed to put it in the middle, but I'm not taking that off. So. There's a gap right here and that's kind of where I want it because it's an offset. Anyhow, if you have a anything left over for a phone mount that goes on your street bike or whatever, this is a, uh, I think it's a, it's a magnet, rubberized magnet that you line around your house for the uh, robotic carpet cleaner that we never use. So I have like two rolls of this stuff and this is perfect, but I have thinner, uh, thinner rubber somewhere, just don't know where it's at, but Anyway, I'm going to see if this works. So dark and cold hearted I'm breathless to say the least So far from superstar Daydreams are killing me Feel like I'm losing my mind I'm never feeling okay Good days are so hard to find Just help me numb all the pain I'm only one step from dying My angels keep it at bay Can't blame the Just let me fall to my grave Just let me fall to my grave So I've made it to the wheel sensor. Uh, I'm not sure if that's right. That's what the uh, guy told me when I called uh, Trail Tech. Anyhow, I've saw some people drill into this with this model. It's a generic, I think it's 752-119. I think that's the model number. But uh, anyway, I don't feel too comfortable with that. I took all this off. I lined it up. It's kind of crooked. But, man, I, I hope it don't rub. But the sensor, hopefully when I install it on the, uh, the, the rotor, it'll come about quarter of an inch from the tip or less so we'll see all 
All right, so this is a new day. Uh, I've got the wheel speed sensor installed. It was, a, it was a pain in my ass. You can see as I scratched up the rotor there, but I do plan on changing it. I tried the other one. It just wasn't going on far enough. Uh, this is a 2021 again. I think their instructions are for a little bit older bikes. So I actually had to cut an indention here in the uh, fork guard and it fit perfectly. So you, you gotta play around with it. But now it reads, so here's the sensor right here, or magnet, this is the magnet, that's the sensor. And that right there works perfectly for me. You don't have to be too close to it, but I've learned that this has to be kind of twisted this way, further this way than that way. Uh, so I've got that installed. Now I have to do everything else, the uh, coolant, RPM, and the power. So I'm gonna do a time lapse of uh, me taking everything apart and going from there. Okay, so I've got the uh, tank out of the way, I've got the plastics off. I'm trying to figure out if I want to wire up the uh, main power for the uh, Trailtech Vapor to the accessory block that I already installed or a uh, AC power on so that way it turns on when the bike turns on so that way I can uh, have an accurate track of the hours, engine hours of this bike. Also, I've went ahead and zip tied up the, uh, the little port, little flow port here for the coolant just to kind of get a good idea of how much uh, play I have with the cord, which is not long at all. I really hope that just, I don't think it's gonna fit. I really don't think it's gonna fit and it's, it's not gonna look decent. Uh, based off of how short this is, I think I'm gonna have to run it straight to the fork somewhere and back here. See, it's barely long enough to do that. I'm not gonna be able to wired up through the frame, you know, nice and neat like I want to just because of how short it is. So Troll Tech, if you're seeing that, make that longer or give me an extension, please. Just 
let me fall to my grave Heart fails under pressure Wonder if these bad days will last forever So pessimistic from the past All the good things end up in caskets So I ran the wire for the speed sensor. Definitely gonna be redoing that later. I do not like it. That speed sensor wire is tough for no freaking reason. Uh, it's only two little wires going up there. I shrink wrap this just to kind of give it some more protection, but I'm still thinking about split loom tube here because I mean, it's only gonna take one little branch or something. It's gonna catch it and rip it, slap off. So I kind of want to reinforce this. Anyway, ran it through here. I've got to clean all this up. As you can see, I tried to trace it. This thing is very tough. So ran it up here. It's gonna loop under and go straight to the uh, computer. But as for these, I don't know how I'm gonna clean that mess up. I don't wanna put more split loom tube for just these two little bitty wires. It's gonna be, it's gonna look real thick through there. So uh, we continue. wanted to stop the uh, time warp for just a second to show you that the uh, two wires that I have in this split loom tube going all the way up to the computer uh, behind the number plate, that's going to be the RPM wire and the power wire. So when you see me route it down through the uh, above the radiator and under the tank to the, uh, I'm going to do mine straight to the uh, coil pack right there. That's going to be the green wire. Pretty sure of it. Haven't looked it up yet, but I'm sure that that's positive. After uh, having a couple technical difficulties with this bike, I tested the coil and the rectifier and everything. So anyway, the green wire, I'm pretty sure it's the power. I'll have to find the main uh, accessory power that powers on with the bike cuts on. So I figured out where I'm going to run the main power for the Trolltech Vapor. Uh, it's not going to be to the accessory block that I installed previously, nor a uh, power supply near the engine. So the map sensor control and the traction control stop, stop button here, that harness is going to run directly behind the number plate. As you can see, I disconnected it. If you look closely, the little black wire where my thumb is and the gray wire. That gray wire does, does not have any power running to it unless you start the bike. That is exactly what you want. So I'm going to try to solder 
Uh, just put a little solder in those holes without removing the connectors. They're really hard to move and I don't want to damage it. So before I start draining the coolant here, uh, I wanted to stop and make a correction. Earlier in the video, I stated the uh, you wire the RPM wire to the green wire to the coal pack. It's going to be the black wire. Do not wire it to the green or you won't get a reading. Uh, anyway, I'm going to start the time warp and start draining the fluid and make my cuts. So either I thought my camera was on or the battery died. Uh, I've got a fresh battery in there now, but I just wanted to explain you don't need any special tools to cut this hose. I just marked, I just marked it, you know, probably an inch and a quarter up top. When I took it off, this is all I used, just a regular pair of scissors. Uh, you can just squeeze the end flat or get someone to help you and just cut them and it makes a perfect line, perfect straight line. You don't need any special tools. So there it is, all complete. Uh, definitely gonna get some black clamps. I don't like that, it's ugly. But there it is. I slid this up a little further too because Trail Tech, if you're listening, please give us a longer cable. That's ridiculous. I couldn't even run it through the frame and make it look neater to go behind the number plate. I had to run it pretty much right where the uh, throttle cable is and kind of uh, cut right in front over here. Just more cables in the way it looks messy. Anyhow, hopefully that doesn't leak. I might just have to tighten it up, but uh, again, that's where I put it and it's kind of tight. I might have to I might have to loosen that up. I don't like that. So I'm a, I guess I'm gonna put everything back together. I believe everything's complete. And hopefully I'll go get me a video today at Fast Tracks because uh, they're open today. All right, time to put the coolant back in. And yes, I know I should use a funnel, but uh, the Ninja Turtles got my back. Wow, it's kind of hard watching the fluid when I'm watching the camera at the same time. Filming really does add three times as much time as it should take to do any work to anything. Uh, max temp? That's not, I set max uh, at 
210 and danger at 225. This is how cold it is in the garage. And that's supposedly how warm my coolant is right now. 77. Let's see if we can get it up to 160. Alright, so we're at a uh, 160, 159. RPM right here. Rev it up a little bit. See if I can spin the wheel. There we go. There's the mile per hour. So we're here at Fast Tracks. I was able to make it out here before too dark, but uh, there goes my girl in the Honda. Anyway, before I started up, I just wanted to tell you uh, I crank it up, revved it to the max. It was already warm for like 170 degrees. The RPM uh, gauge only went up to like. Let me let me show you. The RPM gauge only went up to like 4,000 to 42 max. This bike makes peak horsepower at 9,300 RPM. I'm not sure if that's something I can change in the settings because it's reading what it's reading at the coil. So I'm not sure. Anyhow, we're gonna pay attention to the speed, the temp, you know, we're just gonna have a good time, but I just wanted to test it out and see all the flaws with it. But I hope that I can fix that because that's the main thing that I like because you can, uh, you can set your shift points. Those, those are supposed to be little lights there that you're supposed to uh, shift that when it blinks. Not sure if it's bright, not sure if it's red, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to go over that and just let you know, but here it is. Got the Kuba Link installed, the X grip, and the Trail Tech Vapor. So I'm gonna go around the loop here first and I'm gonna go out in the uh, trail and just test a speedometer. I'm gonna first have the uh, the GoPro on my chest to see if it can read the speed and then I'm going to put it on the helmet and see which uh, views better. It's going to blink for a few seconds because it's going with the uh, green light here. There we go. 